Good to go. All right. Well, for joining us here uh, today. I am uh, Mark Harrier. I'm the chairman of the American Hotel and Lodging Association Board, uh, and also the president of BF Soul Company um, Hotel Group. We own and operate hotels throughout this region. Uh, today, uh, leaders of our industry join together in alignment on an issue of very significant and great importance, that is uh, worker safety. As you may know, those of us in this hotel industry are pretty fierce competitors uh, through our hotels all around the country and around the world. We compete uh, day to day to satisfy our guests and build our business. However, uh, today we come together with the awareness that there are issues that transcend competition. Um, there are issues that working together in alignment, we can make a significant and positive difference. Today's event and worker safety in general fit into that category. As we've worked together on this initiative, each step has had strong support from our industry, from members of our association, commitment from our board, executive committee, and full approval of our association. An industry task force that was very inclusive was formed early last year to begin the process of developing industry initiatives uh, in an implementation framework, again, that would make a difference in a timely manner. Uh, just two months ago, we had our first ever, and it was really a great event, safety summit here in Washington. Lodging executives, uh, lawmakers, uh, a broad range of stakeholders, security experts, joined together to discuss ways to enhance employee and guest safety in our properties. It was quite a successful event and indeed an important one for us. Now today, this is a milestone event and we're proud to be here together representing our industry, the true breadth of our industry. Uh, we've got amazing leaders here today, Chris, Mark, Ellie, Arnie, Jeff, uh, all significant leaders of worldwide hotel organizations, and certainly Catherine Luger, the leader of our trade association, the AHNLA. Um, and it's also great to welcome a number of very key partners and stakeholders with us, including the Time's Up organization and other aligned groups that are supporting our efforts. Um, it's an incredibly important issue. It's one that we take very seriously, and we appreciate the broad support that we've received so far. Now, it gives me fantastic and great pleasure to welcome to the stage here, uh, Catherine Luger, the President and CEO of the American Hotel Lodging Association. Thank you. And uh, welcome. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, Mark, great opening comments. You know, I want to start off by reminding you all that in our business, it's centered on people taking care of people, right? That has always been the top priority. I couldn't be more proud of today's announcement that's really building on that legacy. HLA member companies coming together to proactively address the issue of safety and providing yet another layer of security for hotel employees. You see, hotels have been investing in employee and guest safety for decades, working with lots of experts to continuously update protocols and procedures. This is an ongoing challenge. The hotel industry is steadfast in our commitment to be part of the solution. Protecting our employees and the millions of guests who stay in our hotels each day is of paramount importance to the industry. As we know, and we've heard even more so in the past year, no industry is immune from dealing with the issues of sexual harassment. Combating this takes vigilance. We will continue to work day in and day out to make sure that America's hotels are safe for those who both work in them and visit them. And that's why, quite frankly, we're here today. Today, we couldn't be more proud to announce in partnership with the major hotel brands and membership, our five-star promise. A wide range of tools, technologies, and resources 
to prevent sexual harassment and assault in hotels across the country. These include our people culture, mandatory anti-sexual harassment policies, training and education, implementing employee safety devices, as well as expert guidance and vital partnerships. We're gonna hear more about each one of these from the executives uh, who are with us. As part of this commitment, the companies here, along with many others, are committing to provide an additional layer of security to U.S. hotel employees by deploying safety devices. This can be an important line of additional protection, particularly for those workers whose job requires them to go room to room. The Five Star Promise builds on efforts already underway in New York, Washington, D.C., Chicago, Seattle, and other areas where these devices are already provided to employees. But today's announcement broadens that commitment across the country, where many hotel companies are well underway in proactively providing employees with these safety devices. You have to remember that the hotel industry is segmented and diverse, right? It ranges from a 50-story hotel in a large city to a small roadside inn, right? And everything in between. And with that uh, diverse, uh, diversity of our industry, different hotels having different layouts and different needs, this commitment is for wide-ranging technologies, some of which have already been deployed and others that are being targeted for implementation by 2020. We aim to ensure the best solution for each kind of hotel. This effort builds on prior commitments, including a safety and security summit you just heard about that we held earlier this summer. It also builds off of a task force of industry experts that we convened in early 2017 to begin the process of outlining an implementation framework. In addition to the new technologies as a part of the Five Star Promise, today's commitment also includes a pledge by the members of this industry to make sure that anti-sexual harassment training policies are in place, that employees receive training on, on identifying and reporting sexual harassment. Additionally, we are broadening our already strong partnerships with a wide range of national organizations that target sexual violence, sexual assault, and trafficking, as well as promote workplace safety. Those include the National Alliance to End Sexual Violence, ECPAT, Polaris. And of course, we will continue to provide industry-wide training and development of up-to-date materials for the industry's use. We also have been working with Tina Chen, co-founder of Time's Up Legal Defense Fund and partner at Buckley Sandler on our efforts. They, of course, are leading the change on behalf of those who have been harassed, abused, or assaulted in the workplace. And Tina, we've appreciated your expertise and your passion and guidance along the way. We're glad to now have Tina Chen, a founder of the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund, with us. Ladies and gentlemen, Tina Chen. Well, thank you, Catherine. I am delighted and honored to be here today uh, and to be part of this really unprecedented announcement on behalf of an entire industry to address workplace safety um, and address sexual harassment. Um, it's an issue I've been passionate about all my entire life. I was a single working mom as a corporate litigator for over two decades at Skadden before I went to the White House, whereas chair, um, executive director of the Council on Women and Girls, I worked on our working families agenda that included issues of workplace inclusion and diversity. Um, and then now at Buckley Sandler, since leaving the White House, I've actually created a pra practice where we have workplace cultural compliance as part of our work because I have found that companies, like the companies you see before you, want to address these issues, but we don't know how. You know, it's been three decades since sexual harassment was outlawed by the Supreme Court, and yet we are where we are today. And that's because the tools at hand over the last three decades hasn't haven't met the job, haven't done the work, and we need to develop new tools, like the new tools you're seeing unrolled by the hotel industry today. Um, and that's because, really, change comes from within. 
Um, you know, I am rep as, as Catherine mentioned, I'm the co-founder of the Times of Legal Defense Fund, where we are advocating and representing individuals who have sexual harassment claims. But the work I'm doing at Buckley Sandler and together with industries is about that change from within, because that's how we'll make sustainable workplaces that are safe and respectful to all workers, where everyone can reach their full potential as a workforce. And that's why this announcement today is so critical and so important. You know, it's about building on what the industry has done in the past, but going beyond it, developing new tools, doing things like the employee um, safety devices, but not just stopping with the devices, talking about people culture, talking about education and training, you know, talking about strong anti-harassment policies, and continuing to work with advocates and experts in the field. That five-star promise I view as critically important and comprehensive. And then finally, it is so exciting for me to see an industry come together across competitors. To have folks who are fierce competitors, and believe me, I stay in all their hotels. <laughs> so I know, I know the quality of the hotels, but I also know the fierce competitors. I get all their emails. <laughs> um, and, but to come together on this issue, which as Mark said, transcends competition, but is really about how we support both our workers and our guests, and to make the experience in the workplaces that these companies have the most respectful, those kind of workplaces that support individuals who are reaching their full potential as workers, and also their guests in providing the best customer experience that you possibly can, which authentically has to begin at home with how you're treating your workers is tremendously exciting. I do a lot of work across a lot of industries, and this is the first industry that I have seen come together across this broad range of competitors. From, as Catherine said, the small mom and pop roadside inn to some of the largest chains in the world. And I want to commend the industry for doing that, for standing together. I really look forward to the continuing work that we're going to do in the years to come. Thank you. So we are now delighted to turn this over to the leaders of some of the largest and most iconic hotel brands. We're going to first kick things off with Chris Nassetta from Hilton. Thank you, Catherine and Tina. Thank you. Those were inspiring words. And thank you, uh, everybody from the press and others that we're working with on this important initiative. Um, I told Catherine, I told others when we got started, I'm really proud to be able to stand here um, with our competitors in this industry and to launch something that is a really important and critical initiative. I grew up in this wonderful industry of ours. I started right down the street at the Capitol Holiday Inn when I was 17 years old. I have the great fortune of being able to lead 380,000 people in 105 countries around the world and also the great fortune to be able to represent our industry as the chairman of the World Travel and Tourism Council and I can say, not just on my behalf, but on everybody's behalf here, I think we are all deeply committed to the people who really bring hospitality to life each and every day and create these wonderful experiences. I also, as a side note, am a father of six daughters. Um, so this initiative is especially important and meaningful to me on a personal level. When I think about hospitality, and Catherine said this, the first and last and the thing that always comes to mind is that we are and we will always be a business of people serving people. Our team members are literally the heart and soul of all of our businesses and they make everything we do each and every day possible. And that's why it's so critical as we stand here today that we prioritize a people culture. And that includes ensuring that our teams feel safe and secure and cared for when they come to work each and every day. I think we have a very good track record, not just over the last few years, honestly, over dozens, you know, decades and decades of doing things to make sure we create a safe and secure environment. But we need to do more, and we need to continue that momentum. It's obviously no small task, and at Hilton, we believe to affect the change, we need to address it head on. That's why we're here. I'm sure that's why everybody else you see in the room is here. We've already done a number of things over, over many years uh, that includes implementing anti-sexual uh, harassment, anti-trafficking policies, and trading and education for all of our team members around the world. We've also deployed safety devices at hotels in New York and here in DC 
Seattle and Chicago, and we have committed to expand to all our U.S. team members at all hotels servicing guests' rooms by the year 2020. And in the years to come, we're going to have to continue, we know, as an industry and as a company, to stay intensely focused on supporting and investing in and caring for those that are making all of this wonderful hospitality possible, and that's all of our team. So I want to thank you uh, for being here again today, and it's my pleasure to introduce Mark Oplamazian, the CEO of Hyatt. Thanks, Chris. Um, I'm thrilled to be here with the HNLA and with my colleagues from the industry and with Tina Chen. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, procedures and protocols that uh, are in place and we are uh, committing to expand and extend with special focus on um, anti-sexual harassment policies, which I'm happy to report are widespread across our industry. Um, the, uh, the particular uh, focus from my perspective is that uh, there are mandatory policies that are already in place and, and our commitment is to extend those to ensure that they are uh, translated for all, many languages that our colleagues uh, are fluent in and to ensure that there's comprehensive coverage across all of our hotels. Um, it's critically important that those policies live in a commitment to our people and in, in a culture, which uh, is exactly what Chris was referring to earlier. And we've worked very hard to create an environment uh, in which uh, people feel safe to come forward and, and report on any uh, points of disquiet or discomfort that they've had, uh, and certainly any, any issues around harassment. Uh, this is not a static commitment. This is an evolution. As circumstances change, as technology evolves, and as the needs change, we will continue to assess, evolve, and iterate our policies and our procedures and, and how our hotels actually operate, including some very rudimentary things like the actual positioning of housekeeping carts in relation to an open door when a housekeeper is in a, a room, for example. Uh, and many other procedural elements of how hotels actually operate. Um, this is not a new topic. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, a topic that's been uh, a, a point of focus for all of our companies um, and for the industry for some time. Um, at Hyatt, our uh, purpose as a company is to care for people so they can be their best. The uh, essential element to be able to care for our guests is to ensure that our own colleagues are cared for and that they feel like they're in a safe environment to be able to extend that sense of care. And so uh, that led us to um, mandate uh, employee safety devices across all of our managed hotels in the Americas a year ago. So over the past year, we've deployed employee safety devices in over 120 hotels, 4,500 colleagues uh, to date. And we're now extending that to our franchise partners and ensuring that we are giving those uh, hotels the support that they need to extend uh, the employee safety device rollout. Um, the last thing I would say is um, I'm particularly proud to be in this industry. It's uh, an industry that is able to make a huge difference in people's lives, uh, for sure to impact guests' lives, but it all starts with our colleagues. Um, and this show of force uh, and unity around this topic I think is not just appropriate, but really notable. And um, it, it really enhances my uh, satisfaction getting up every morning and thinking and feeling like we're doing something really important for people. Um, now I'd like to introduce Ellie Malouf, who's been with IHG since 2015, responsible for overseeing the company's uh, over 4,000 hotels, and he's gonna talk about um, training. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's uh, words like yours and Chris's and all those that will follow that uh, keeps us inspired to move forward in this industry uh, to provide the best for our guests, but the best for our colleagues. And uh, you know, I'm really glad to be here today to support this important initiative, focused today on the safety of our employees. Our commitment to safety in our industry has had a long legacy, providing ongoing training and education. And this third pillar of our five-star commitment, ongoing training and education, equips, 
and empowers our employees to do the right thing. It provides employees with the latest information to be safe, and it helps colleagues to properly identify and address harassment when they see it and when they experience it. At ISG, we've had an unwavering commitment to work environment that is free from harassment and expects and demands personal safety. But we take a holistic approach, including comprehensive policies, mandatory training, and personal safety technology. So we continuously review and strengthen our policies, which we're now translating into additional languages to reach more employees. I know that myself because English was the last of four languages that I learned. So if everything was in English when I got here, it would have, it would have been a problem in 1981. And my first job was in a hotel. We rolled out mandatory and enhanced workplace training for all corporate and hotel employees. We also created employee-led and company-sponsored resource groups to promote an empowerment culture. Now, we're also building our track record of providing employee safety technology and have deployed personal safety devices at hotels in New York, Chicago, and Seattle. Now, we're gonna use the employee and management feedback from these hotels to guide our plan for deploying devices at all managed hotels in the United States by the year 2020. And we're collaborating with our owners on how to best support our thousands of franchise locations. All these efforts reflect our enduring commitment to employee safety. Now, to speak more about our industry commitment to providing employee safety devices, I'd like to introduce Arnie Sorensen, President and Chief Executive Officer of Merit International. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, we are all, I think, thrilled to be here to talk about such an important subject. 91 years ago, this past May, uh, Marriott started about a mile up 14th Street, a nine-stool nine A&W root beer stand. Uh, from that moment in 1927, the founders said, take care of our associate, the associate will take care of the customer, and the customer will come back again and again. Uh, and that phrase has been used now for 90-some years, uh, longer certainly than I've been alive and than I've been at Marriott. To, to do that really means a couple of things. Uh, it is about creating opportunity for our people so that everybody can succeed, uh, no matter who they are, no matter what gender they are, that they, no matter what background they come from, that they have the tools and the opportunity to, uh, to reach their full potential. Uh, and secondly, of course, it means investing in people. Uh, that's been done around training for many, many years. One of the first conversations I had with Bill Marriott was, Training is the way we tell people we care about them because it is investing fundamentally in their future. Uh, these things must continue. They are certainly traits that are shared, I think, uh, broadly across the industry, uh, but times do change. Uh, and we end up in a world where technology is giving us uh, both opportunities and I suppose in some, uh, to some extent threats uh, in ways that we didn't anticipate in the past. But one of the things that's really exciting today is the opportunity that technology uh, gives us. We now have the ability to put a device in each one of our associates' hands uh, that allow them, no matter where they are in a hotel, to call for help. Uh, it sounds like a simple idea, but when you think about a 50-story hotel where rooms are not just adjacent to each other but stacked on top of each other, uh, we've got to make sure that that device works in a way that brings somebody uh, to the right room. Otherwise, it's simply ineffective. Uh, we now are confident enough in the technology that we are requiring this not only of managed hotels, but it will be a brand standard and required of our franchised hotels. Uh, by 2020, we continue to work with our technology partners to make sure that this technology can be broadly replicated in a way that gives uh, our team confidence uh, about uh, the ability to call somebody uh, uh, at a moment's notice. But rather than hear from me, maybe I could ask a few of our associates, Martha, Carlos, and Latifa, to tell us about these devices. I definitely feel safer because this is a very big hotel and there's a lot of people coming in and out. Everybody gets this happy in the, in the hotel about this change because everybody feels more safe. It's a big relief for the whole family, 
first of all, for me, being on the floor late, and for my husband and my kids, they don't have to worry about mommy. She's okay. She always gonna be okay. She never gonna be in danger. She's working in a safe environment. So thank you to them. I want to also thank Erica Alexander, who is one of the number of Marriott Associates who is here with me. She runs our operating services group for all of the Americas uh, and sp has spent many years in hotels and knows exactly what we're talking about uh, when we talk about how do we operationalize this kind of uh, technology. This is it right here, or at least one version of it. Very simple, uh, can be We'll see if somebody shows up. We're not one of our hotels. We're not one of our hotels, so pro probably not. And we should, we should maybe say this is not warranted to work outside of the hotel. Uh, but these devices are uh, simple, quick. Press the button, uh, and someone will come. And I think that was I turn it over to Jeff Bellotti from Wyndham Hotels and Resorts. Let me uh, close with just one of the uh, comments about why I think all of us love this industry so much. Uh, we are an industry made up of people from everywhere, uh, broadly different in the way we define ourselves, whether it be by geography or religion or gender or lifestyle or whatever uh, way goes into our identity. And we welcome people from everywhere. Uh, with these devices, we can do that in a way that gives us more confidence that we can do it safely, uh, more confidence that we can take care of each other as we do it, and more confidence that we can welcome the guests who should be welcomed. Jeff Blatty. Thank you, Arnie. Catherine mentioned just how lucky and blessed we are to have Tina with us, and, and, and a round of applause for uh, what, what is just an incredibly vital partner of ours going forward. Um, with, 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 without the help that, that, uh, that, that Tina's organization is, has, has done to get us to where we are today, we would not uh, certainly be where we are today. And there are certain other individuals and, and some great um, best-in-class industry partners who are here with us today that uh, we just feel a very uh, uh, great sense of, of pride to work with, uh, an organization, Polaris, that has been around since, uh, boy, uh, I think it's been around since 2002. It's in its 16th year. And is Elaine McMartin here? Elaine, thank you for, uh, for all of your work. Uh, from ECPAT, which uh, is an organization that was uh, mentioned, we have, we have both uh, Carol Smoleski and Jason Matthews. Is Jason here? Thank you for being here. Uh, from Blue Campaign, we have uh, Mick McCown. Is Mick here? Uh, Mick said uh, he was coming. And from the D.C. Rape and Crisis Center here in town, we have uh, Indra Hennard. Is Indra here? Indra, thank you for being here with us. Uh, were it not for the support of Time's Up and, and the National Association to End Sexual Violence, uh, we, we, led by Catherine and, and uh, Rosanna, would not be able to, uh, I think, do what uh, none of us, uh, boy, in 30 years, we've been in this industry together, uh, competing uh, with the American Hotel and Lodging Association and its auspices behind us. Uh, and there has never been, and certainly in my career, and any, uh, initiative that has brought us all together as this one has. And so the next 12 months is all about rolling out the training, putting into the hands of our associates what Arnie just, uh, just held up, and sharing the best practices that, uh, that this initiative brings for all of our owners, all of our franchisees uh, across America. And with that, uh, Catherine, I think we're going to uh, open this up for Q&A. Thank you, Jeff. It is, um, I think you've now heard from certainly the chief executives with us, but also many others in the industry. This is a bold, comprehensive, and unprecedented commitment. We really do believe it will bring added peace of mind to hotel employees, and I couldn't be more proud to watch this industry of fierce competitors come together to do what's right by our people, to build on a legacy of taking care of our people. With that, I'm gonna call our industry colleagues up and we are happy to take a few questions. Mark Alva with Hearst Television. Yes. Do you have an estimate industry-wide for how much this rollout by 2020 will cost uh, the brands? And then a second question. Mm -hmm. A lot of people here have mentioned those cities where these devices are doing trials right now, New York, Chicago, uh, here in DC, for example. 
In many of those cities, though, the industry was opposed to them being in place initially. Why the change of heart? Yeah, so let me actually take your last question first, and then we'll go to the cost question. I think it's really important to, first of all, recognize, as you've heard every single CEO say, taking our care of our people has always been the priority. What you've seen, right, are a number of companies who are already using employee safety devices, and we're seeing that evolution now happen more broadly throughout the industry. In some cities, however, the issues haven't been about the safety devices. We certainly have had a very constructive partnership with cities like Chicago, where we worked hand in glove with them on their solution. Now we understand that building on that experience, it's now time to build on the legacy of taking care of our people and now do this industry-wide. So I couldn't be more proud of these companies, these leaders. I don't know if anyone has any more to add before I take on the cost question. On the cost, our current estimates, and we are working to quantify this and happy to follow up with you, I think it's safe to say that it's going to be hundreds of millions of dollars um, affecting tens of thousands of people, um, and we're happy to, to certainly get back to you with the, with the exact numbers. And just to follow up, if I could, please. Um, so was there any concern that regulation in other cities, in other communities, was coming down the pike and you wanted to get ahead of it? No, this really is about building on a long leg legacy we've had in our industry of taking care of our people, and, and that's exactly what we're doing. Yes, other questions? Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Kate from Lodging Magazine. So I also have a two-part question. First, how are you going to be implementing this on a property level? Like, how is it going to the GMs? Is it going, how are you training your people? And second, not only are you training the people to use the devices, you also have to train someone to monitor them. So how are you going to train those associates as well? Does anyone up here want to take I, that? I know I that, yeah. I, I would say many of those programs are being developed in some cities, as you know, we've, we've rolled these out, but we're now trying to harmonize the approach so that, that it's consistent across the country. And that part of doing that is to tailor fit for different type of properties what the right answer is. So using a Hilton example, what works in a 100 room Hampton Inn in a, in a small town is gonna be very different than what's gonna work in the 3,000 room Hilton Hawaiian Village with eight towers. And so, you know, this is why it takes some time to get it right because we don't want the illusion of safety, we want real safety. So that means we have to have the right uh, tailor fit solution for the device in the right hotels and we have to do the right education and training. To be more specific about you know, the property level, I think you should assume that the training uh, and education will be across all levels. You know, corporately, it will hit many different departments within, within I think, all of our companies. And on the front line, it's gonna, it's gonna be pro across the property generally because uh, you not only have to you know, make sure the people that are out on the floors um, and distribute around the property, you know how to use it. You need to know that everybody that is in the building um, knows how to respond to it, depending on what type of device it is. That's terrific. Anyone want to add? Well, I'd just like to add that, uh, excuse me, as a franchisee and operator of several of the brands here, thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> okay. It's fantastic. Uh, but uh, we're looking forward to the strong lead of our big brand families to give us some really programmatical guidance uh, that will work to the different types of hotels that we have because we range from extended stay properties that might be 90 rooms in size up to uh, very, very large center city convention hotels. So it won't be one size fits all, but what will be very, very important is, as uh, Chris mentioned, that it works, that it's executed well, that the technology is sound, and that we then have in place the processes and procedures so that uh, it actually works when a team member is calling um, on the device. I, I want to add, that, that piece that Mark just said, that it's not one size fit all, fits all, is really important. I think one of the lessons learned from the last 30 years when things haven't worked is a lot of sexual harassment training and policies were off the shelf. Right. They probably all looked alike across industries, across types of employers. That's why it hasn't worked. You do have to have solutions that are tailored to the scenarios that you're working in, the kinds of culture that each company has, and that are responsive to the situations that your employees and your guests are going to see. And I think that's what is so exciting about this, is a realization by this industry that everything has to be a little bespoke between right. each type of property, 
each type of brand within the brand, each type of property. Um, and they're going to take the time to get it done right rather than doing a quick fix across the board. Thank you, Tina. Any other questions? Yes, right here. Yes. Uh, Brian Roten with Hotel News Now. Uh, two questions. Uh, one, could you clarify with the uh, being provided these uh, safety devices, is this something the brands are providing on their own costs or is this something for owners to pay for? And the second question is I've heard that you're rolling this out in the U.S. Is there a timetable for your international properties as well? Great. I might look to you all. Certainly today's announcement, though, is focused on American hotels. But yes, Arnie, go ahead. Yeah, uh, those are, those are uh, both obviously great questions. There's a lot of development work which is underway now, but I think ultimately when we get to something that can be uh, clearly rolled out, and it's in dozens or hundreds of hotels today, but we need it to be in thousands of hotels. And some of that technology is continuing to work. But when we get to roll out, it'll be part of the operating cost of the hotel. Uh, and, and just to, to uh, and it, it, it can be hopefully not terribly expensive. Uh, now, again, it's going to depend. If, if uh, Mark talked about, you know, a 100-room uh, hotel someplace, uh, nighttime staffing at that hotel might be a couple of people. Uh, and and there, uh, that device is probably going to have to call the person who is at the front desk or the person who is in the front office uh, over the night because there's no security office that's staffed around the clock. Uh, where, by comparison, a 2,000-room hotel downtown New York is going to have a security office. It's going to be screens and monitored all the time, and that call is going to go into a different place. The device needs to be simple, it needs to work, uh, and it needs to be something our associates want to adopt. Uh, and, and none of us should think that this is so obvious that associates will do anything that we think they should do. They're, they're going to want to do something that is not heavy to carry. Uh, that works, that's simple, that doesn't get in the way of the, the work that they do. And think housekeepers as being the most common associates that will carry, carry these. Housekeepers are fiercely driven to do great work. Uh, and they want to make sure that this aids their work, doesn't detract from their work. And so that is working with them to make sure the device feels right, it works right. Uh, it's, uh, they know how, where it's going to go. Uh, they're going to want to make sure that they've got somebody reliable to respond to it, but not necessarily that uh, they're going to send something in that's, that's not meaningful. And, and all of that stuff needs to get, we're learning a lot today as we speak, but, but those are really solvable issues and uh, uh, will be blown and going here pretty quickly. That's terrific, Mark. I would just add one thing, and that is um, the actual underlying need that we're addressing here is not an American need, it's a human need. And so uh, the training that we've talked about extensively and the, and the policies and the procedures that we already have in place that we are all committed to exist across the world. This is not unique to the United States. In our case, we've, got, um, we've, we've deployed in all of our managed hotels, including in 12 countries. So we've already taken it outside the United States and our plan would be to extend it uh, around the globe in, with the, um, the correct application given local regulatory environments, local rules um, and local practices, and of course the local, uh, the, the particular uh, physical environment of the hotels that we're deploying in. But we've already had some experience doing it outside the U.S. and, and it is able to be done and, and we intend to continue to roll it out. Well, one thing to add further, uh, we're all very focused on team member satisfaction. It is a very, very critical part of maintaining a uh, fine service staff, it just is. You want the best people working for us, so we are always focused on, on doing that. And what ranks so true through the video that you saw that I've experienced personally in a hotel where we've implemented these is it provides this level of safety. I don't, I don't it's a, you know, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a sense of confidence that uh, the team members have. And that's just one additional benefit to creating that workplace environment where people feel like a workplace family as opposed to this is just a job. And that's crucial to our uh, mission as a service. Terrific. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Uh, two, actually. Um, one, this seems to be a priority among the unions as they're negotiating with all of you. Um, so is this partially to get ahead of that? I don't understand the legal part is going to be a lot slower, but the unions are hitting this right now. The other side of this is 
is this something that you would be considering or be putting into franchise agreements? Um, because I noticed that a lot of this seems to be owned and managed and obviously be working with franchisees. Um, but it is possible to, for instance, you know, make sure that a franchise puts a Bible into the thing, so why not an EDS device or ESD? This is repeating uh, my comments before, but uh, we have the ability to make this a brand standard, which is what we're doing uh, in North America. So it will apply to all managed and all franchised hotels. Uh, and uh, the franchisees will be obligated to meet that. Uh, so that's the, the second question you asked. Great, Chris. Uh, and to that. speak to that, I got my notice the other day as a franchisee, and I had a little forewarning it was coming, but we're, you know. And, and All right, I, yeah, Chris. Yeah. And as I mentioned in my prepared comments, we also are making it a brand standard, so it will apply to all of our hotels system wide, franchise managed. Great, and, and listen, to, to comment on your first question, I think the second one we've put to rest. As I stated a few times, and certainly in my opening comments, this is an evolution of, of taking care of our people, right? And many of the executives have talked about their long-standing priority of training and um, other protocols in place. This is a place where I've already reached out to the head of our union. We have a good, constructive relationship, and there are plenty of places we work together and quite frankly, I hope this is gonna be one of them. I think we both share a commitment. Certainly, it is a fundamental of our industry of taking care of our people. So we'd welcome their partnership and I look forward to the conversation. So Hilton and Mayor can make their brand standard as far as the rest? Yes, same, same point. Terrific, yes. Last question, yeah. Hi there, I'm Rachel Siegel from the Washington Post. I'm wondering if you can just clarify if there are any specifics leading up to 2020 for how this timeline will be rolled out, whether that's specific to training or employees getting the devices, if there are any specifics you can share there. It's gonna look a little I, different. You know, yeah. I, I think it's gonna look a little different for each company. I mean, the, the nice thing about this, and the thing you heard from everybody, is this is very unique in the sense of all of these competitors coming together and harmonizing how we're gonna approach it. But as it relates to the specific training programs, the specific application, all of our uh, business conditions are different. All of our portfolios are different. Customer bases, types of, of hotels are different. And so each of us is gonna have a harmonized approach at a high level and then have to customize it for our individual portfolio. So I think it'll take, it'll take many different forms, but everybody's committed to that time frame. Ellie? I wanna add that uh, I know that a lot of our interest is on the devices and, and those are gonna be very important, but we shouldn't lose sight of the full plan. I mean, the, the policies, the training, the commitment, the education, that's what creates a culture of safety and security. The device comes into play when there is a problem. The primary objective we have is to avoid having a problem. When you look at the situations that are pervasive, it's because there wasn't a culture of security, of safety. There wasn't a culture of respect. There wasn't the training, the policies the education. And so, yes, we want to talk about the devices and we're, we've got a very specific plan about those, but the other four elements of the five-star plan are as important. In fact, they're the ones that will prevent us from having to respond to the devices. That's terrific. All right, well, thank you all for your time. Uh, I think a few folks will be around for questions afterwards. Appreciate it. Thank you.